Thank you. Um, listen, just give us your um, broad brushstrokes on uh, the game uh, coming up, the games plural coming up, fans being back in um, your, your squad. Yeah, well, that, that's probably the most exciting thing about um, the next couple of weeks is that we're, we're going to be playing front of supporters. A month ago, it was, uh, it was obviously in doubt. Last year, we didn't get to play in front of supporters. Um, and it was still a great tournament. Uh, it is the best rugby tournament in, in the world. Uh, we're privileged to, to be involved in it. And to start with England as, as our first game is, is superb. Um, in terms of where we are, we, we have a real strong squad, we believe. The competition for places has been excellent. Uh, we have a lot of players that are fit as well. So if we get to that situation in two weeks' time, we'll, we'll be really pleased as coaches. And we know we have an opportunity, like we do every year, but we feel with, with the players we have and also the experiences this group has gone through, this, this is a big opportunity for us. It's just not the same without supporters, is it? No, no. We would love to have shared the win in Twickenham and the, the last-minute win in Paris with our, with our supporters. They were still really enjoyable occasions, but nothing like... Uh, what we experienced the year before, uh, also in, the in November, it was, it was great to have supporters back at BT Murrayfield. And they were, they were big occasions, Australia and, and South Africa in particular. So now I'm sure it'll be even noisier or even more anticipation from our supporters this time around. We'll get to the guys that you've named in a minute, but I'm just curious, um, no Adam Hastings, is, is he unlucky? Is he injured? What's the, the, the story with Adam? Yeah, I'm lucky. Um, obviously, those that miss out in the squad are, are, are right to feel disappointed. They, they want to be in the squad. Uh, they feel that they deserve it. We give each of them uh, some feedback, but uh, he, he just missed out. He's, he's been involved, I think, in every campaign since he broke through. Uh, came back in from injury last year and was involved in our last game in Paris. But we just feel at the moment um, Blair and Finn are, are playing better. Adam knows he's got things to work on, and if, if he works on them, he shows his form. Then, of course, the door is still open for him and the, and the others that missed the squad. I think you've named five uncapped players. Is there any of them that you're particularly uh, pleased to to be able to bring in and excited to see? All of them, Kerry, all of them. I can Anyone? go through all five if you want, but um, you could, yes, <laughs> on, on, be, please do. Yeah, well, look, Rory Darge, um, it's great to be able to select him again. Uh, he was selected in November, but missed out on a chance to win his first cap for Scotland because he got injured the week before the Tonga game. Since he's came back from his injury, he's been playing really well at a high level in, in Europe and for Glasgow in the URC. Andy Christie's someone it's it's really made a breakthrough this season. He has been involved with, with Saris for two or three years now, played in that, their championship season. But now he's got a, a regular place. Thought he played really well in the Edinburgh game, Gloucester game as well. He's playing at eight, six. Um, I believe he might be playing at seven this week. So it's someone that can cover the whole back row. Uh, in the backs, Ben Velke and Ben, ben White, two players that are in real form. Uh, scrum off is one of those positions that we have a lot of competition. Uh, with two players that were involved in November, they're no longer involved um, in this, this campaign. But that's a testament to, to the work of both bands, the form that they're in. And one more, okay. Kyle Rowe. Um, so that's, that's a great story for someone that's uh, not had opportunities uh, up in Scotland, gone down to, to a club and got into the team at London Irish through some really good pre-season performances, and then backing up throughout the season. The hat-trick against Saracens, uh, and one of them was a, an absolute outstanding try. <laughs> And some consistent performance, he shows that he's an exciting player that we, we want to work with. One last one from me, with the, the outstanding wins you had in England, in France, are you are you resetting the bar? I mean, is there any reason why Scotland cannot be uh, genuine uh, contenders for the championship this season? Is that where the bar's set now? It, it has to be. We, we would enter any um, game or any competition with the goal of, of winning what's in front of us. Uh, we, we feel that the experiences our players have gone through um, over the last year, over the last couple of years, puts them in a good, good position to know how to win a rugby game. It gives them the confidence that they, they've done that before. 
but more more than that, the form that our players are in, the, the competition was really high because our players are in really good form. So they should be confident as individuals, confident with, with the team. But we're aware of what a big challenge this is. We, we won three games last year, but we, we didn't even finish in the top two. We, we were in the fight for every game we played. The Six Nations uh, the year before, it was the same. I think we were, our defeats were less than seven points. So that's a good position to be in, to know that you on your day you can, you can beat anybody or make it tough for anybody. But we're going to make sure we turn those performances into to more wins and, and play to our potential throughout this tournament. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about Scotland's position in terms of strength and depth and, and that potentially being, you know, the, the strongest that, that the, the national team has had for a while. Does that maybe explain why it's a slightly larger squad? I mean, you see like eight back rowers in there, six centres. Are these guys that you just couldn't leave out or more guys that you need to, to, to have a look at? Yes, um, we, we're also aware that we, we have a number of players playing in England, so the, the squad may be bigger because we know they are going going to go back and play uh, this weekend. We'll be able to, sorry, not this weekend, next weekend after our camp, we'll be able to hold some some players in. So a reflection of that, a reflection of the form that uh, it was very difficult getting down to, to six centres, as you say, but with with someone like Rory Hutchison, we see him being able to play in, a, in different positions. So we can see him covering at 15 and 10. But even getting down to that number of five, Plus Rory, as you know, you're leaving out Hugh Jones, Matt Scott, uh, a few others um, that have been involved with us before. So we have to draw the line somewhere. Uh, 39 is probably bigger than we thought. I think most squads are between 36 and 42. But uh, it gives us an opportunity to, to have quality training sessions. Also reward guys that are involved. But also look at a couple of players that maybe haven't been involved before and are playing well, and let's see how they go in our, our environment. For guys like you, like Adam Hastings and uh, maybe George Horn, who, who have been in and around squads for, for a while now, being left out of this, is this a challenge to them 18 months out from a World Cup that, that, that they have to show more? They, you know, they're, they're, It's never taken for granted that they're going to make these squads. It's a challenge for them. Um, we want to see them respond to this challenge. Uh, they've, they've got two or three games uh, over the next two or three weeks. Um, they'll obviously have, certainly in um, Adam and Hugh's case, they'll have games during the, that first part of the Six Nations. So that, that's how they respond. Uh, I'm sure they'll respond positively. I uh, spoke to a few players last night. They, they want to show us that we got the decision wrong. They want to show us what they can do because they, they want to come back and, and play for Scotland. And that's what we want to hear. Now, now we want to see that um, in their performances. And it's a challenge to the guys that are selected too. They know that they've, they've got a responsibility, not just playing for the country, but also that they've been given this opportunity ahead of others that maybe have been in the squad before or, or are quality players too. They've, they've got to give the best version of themselves and do all they can to stay in the squad. I'll ask one, and it's on fans again. Did you feel that the, that the lack of fans in Twickenham and in Paris helped you guys last year? And how big a challenge is it to show that you can go away with a partisan crowd against you and get away wins in those environments? Logic would say that it helped us because we, we won in Wales, London and Paris, but we lost two games at home last year. Uh, normal seasons, it's been, it's been the opposite way around. Now, each game tells its own story and you've got to, you've got to win whether there's crowds or not. We know the backing at um, that BT Murrayfield helps us. We know the, the backing at the Principality helps Wales. So you've got to overcome that in the Six Nations. And this year it's, it's back to being a, a proper Six Nations with 70, 60, 80,000 supporters behind uh, the home team. But I, I believe it's a challenge our team is ready for. Cheers. Last couple of questions, please, guys. Yeah, I mean, Gregor, a lot's obviously been said about the strength and depth. You, you mentioned that the number of players picked. How does it stack up? You go as far to say this is the strongest squad that's ever gone into Six Nations. Certainly, in my experience of a coach, and I put that as an assistant coach back in 2009 to, to 2012, and probably as a player, um, 
from I don't ninety nine onwards, um, the the competition for places is intense, and it's not it's not just saying look we there's three guys that are competing for centre that we've seen a train at Edinburgh that aren't playing. No, that the other week we had. Uh, I hope I don't miss anybody out, but we had um, Sione and Sam playing for Glasgow. We had James Lang and Mark Bennett playing and bonus point wins for both teams. We had Matt Curry coming into the, the Edinburgh team the following week. We had Mascot playing for Leicester, the current league leaders. Hugh Jones playing for Harlequin, the last year's champions. Chris Harris, um, Rory Hutchinson. That, that's just in one position. So players are playing well at the highest level of, of the club game. So yeah, it, it, it is very competitive um, and that's a good sign. It's a good sign if we do have injuries uh, or anything that might happen COVID-wise and we know we've got other people that can step in outside the squad. But just now it's up to the players in this squad and, and ultimately the 23 that get selected for England to, to gel as a team and, and play their best rugby. And the last question in the broadcast section to Julian, please. Yeah, um, hello, Greg. Yeah. Uh, sorry, just to go back on this. As someone who's actually experienced many times as a player, just what is it about playing in front of 67,000 people at Murrayfield that makes so much of a difference when you're actually on the field yourself? Well, no, look, you've, you've been there as a supporter, um, whether it's from the, the reception the players get out as they run onto the field or the anthems or just the noise when you're playing well you don't get that sensation, that feeling in any other walk of life. So it's great. It's a buzz. It's a thrill for our players. It propels you forward. It uh, gives you confidence. Um, and it's it's why, amongst other reasons, it's why our players put in the, the effort and make the sacrifices to get that opportunity once more. And it's great we're going to have supporters this time around.